Hey guys, what's happening? Zach Sikich here, and today's video is going to be about the in zone forecheck. Later videos, we'll talk about the neutral zone forecheck. Today's video, we'll be talking about attacking the other team in their zone. We're jumping on offense and how that works. And the name of this specific forecheck is called Dog Fox Hawk, and that name comes from the roles that F1, F2, and F3 get during this forecheck. I want to let you guys know there are many different types of four checks and as you advance in your hockey career you'll learn different four checks based on the team you're playing based on the skill set that your teammates have maybe one line will do a specific type of four check and the other two lines will do different ones depending on the time of the game depending on what the score is there's a ton of reasons how you can use different four checks but today's four check is going to be usually the first one that most kids and most athletes learn it's called the dog fox hot. So let's get after it. So F1 is the forward that's closest to the puck. It doesn't matter if he, he or she is a center or a wing. Usually not going to be a D, so we're just going to be talking about the forwards for right now. So F1 is going to be on the puck as hard as they can like a dog. A dog is going hard, but there's specific jobs here. So say the puck gets dumped in, and they are the X's here, and the puck is right down here. So the puck is right down there, and what we need to do is our F1 is a dog. And the F1, in my opinion, based on the experiences I've had, wants to come in hard, and we want to take away this weak side of the ice. That's going to be a theme for our F1s, especially in the systems that I run and the, and the direction that we give our athletes. I think it's going to be much tougher for a team to break out if our F1 comes in and inside out. See this guy, this is the inside of the rink, and he pushes that guy to the outside of the rink. So this guy cannot go D to D. We do not want this, we don't want their player able to skate behind the net. We don't want that. We do not want them going D to D. Because if they do that, that opens up all 85 to 100 feet of the width of the ice and it's much easier to create offense when you can use both sides of the ice. Um, it's hard, a lot harder to defend 85 to 100 feet versus just 45 to 50 feet. So we want to take away that inside, all right, and forecheck this guy. So I, ideally, this guy is going to skate or pass there. So this is F1. Inside out, dog on the puck. Dog. Dog. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Right on the puck. Okay. Now F2 is like a dog, but he's a fox. He's not going to get so far in there. F2 is supporting the dog, and he is going to go to the strong side wall, right in this area right here, because we know that the dog is going to flush this guy, is going to flush the bird, if you will, up the strong side. Maybe they're going to try to pass it to a guy right there. So we're going to sit on that guy. We're not going to get stuck in here. We're going to sit on that strong side wall and let them pass it right to us or let it skate to us. Now, the hawk is going to be F3. F3 is going to be up here in this area. So F3 is going to be high in the zone like a hawk. So F3 is high on the strong side. High on the strong side. So the strong side is the side that the puck is on, all right? Maybe they have like a center coming through, something like that. So what's going to happen now is F1 should flush the puck up the strong side. F2 is sitting on the strong side wall as a fox. F3 is high up here. So what could possibly happen, again, could possibly happen, is they... The dog flushes the guy, their, defend, their defenseman, up the strong side wall. Strong side guy passes it um, up to the, the, their, their breakout, their strong side wing. We, we go down as F2. Now there should be a loose puck in this area here. Now F3 can come pick up that puck. That's why we want him high on the strong side. But let's see what happens here. Now let's see what happens if that puck gets to the weak side. And there has to be a rotation here. So this is going to be a great concept to learn how we rotate from our F1, F2, F3, from our dog, fox, and hawk. And what the hawk does 
once that puck switches sides, because inevitably that's going to happen. We're not going to have a perfect forecheck all the time. And a lot of times a perfect forecheck requires a rotation because they have a very skilled defenseman back here. So say, what's going to happen? That's their D with the puck. What's going to happen? Say F1 gets does a nice job. This guy starts wheeling this way right there. F1 flushes him out and say he escapes. So this is F1. This is the dog. F2 is reading and reacting and supporting, all right? F2 is not gonna also go in here, okay? Because then one pass could beat that guy. F2 is coming like right to here, right? Because here's why, here's why. Your coaches might be shaking your head, oh, he's gonna go, he's gonna go, okay? Here is what could happen. F2 is flying in there, but they have their guy right there because almost every team is going to try to break out of the strong side, uh, either wheeling the puck up the strong side or they're gonna hit the strong side wing four out of five times, 80% of the time. So if F2 comes flying in here, then we have one pass beats two players. Why work so hard to accomplish less? Let's work hard and smart, okay? We wanna go right to here, so F2, goes right to here. Now see, we got a good F1, we forced that guy up the strong side, good D here, he escapes, he hits here. Now there's a scrum down here. F, F3 would be about right here. Right up here, because we'd have a D there, we'd have a D here. So F3 is high on the strong side. High on the strong side, not the middle of the ice, but high on the strong side, right? High on the strong side, because if we can control the puck, we can use them right away, because we want to be on offense here. But Say this, this puck gets down this corner, now the puck goes over here. Now F3 starts to read, and now we're coming out hard right there. We're coming in hard right there. F2 is gonna be coming across. We're trying to get to the strong side, and F1 is now becoming F3. Okay, you guys see that? So F1 has to come back hard through the middle of the ice because this is what could happen. So oftentimes, if a forecheck gets busted by maybe a good breakout, which is gonna happen, watch, say they go here. F1 doesn't get there in time, all right? And they go D to D behind the net, all right? F2 is over here, he takes away this wall, but maybe he doesn't get there in time either. So they go right there, so then they go one, Two, F1 is going in hard here, but he fails. F2 is here, and he fails. So what has to happen now, F3 is, I'll draw that so you can actually read it. F3 is high on the strong side, along with our D, we got three guys back. It's very difficult to give up an odd man rush if you have three guys back. But here's the key now. F1, when you get beat, don't chase. Stop, don't take a big loop like I drew there, all right? Let's do this. Let's go here, we get beat. Now stop and come right back through the middle because what could happen is when they go D to D to wing and they're trying to fly this weak side winger here or the center coming through and now this, this the guy who was F1 is on his horse back through the middle with his stick down, and he could intercept those passes coming through. So now we have F1 coming back, we have our F3, and we have a D and a D back, so that's four guys back. If we're getting back with four, three or four guys back all the time, not giving up odd man rushes. So if you're playing against a really good team or just a really good group of players, then they break your four check, and we're gonna get back and we're gonna live the fight another day. We can't be lazy on the forecheck. We gotta make sure we're having stops and starts and we're identifying that rotation of F1 back to F3 when the forecheck gets busted. So there you have it, guys. There's an example of the in-zone forecheck. Make sure you share this with your teammates. Make sure to share this with other coaches if you found it valuable. And I'd love to get your feedback. Comment down below. You guys have a great day.